In 2015, we got Daniel Craig's fourth James Bond film, Spectre. And while this film gets mixed reviews in the community, I personally always loved it. But as usual, when it comes to the title song, Eon is very, very selective. And especially following the incredible success that Adele's song had from Skyfall, they were really hoping that lightning was gonna strike twice. But for Spectre, they had some really big names that submitted songs for this movie. Radiohead, you had Lana Del Rey, Ellie Goulding, Rita Orr. Ultimately, producers went with Sam Smith, who was extremely big at the time. And I'll be the first to admit, prior to filming this, I hadn't given this song much attention. I didn't really dive into it that much. When it first came out, my reactions were kind of mixed on it. I wasn't sure how to take it. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. So this is kind of a two-part video. Let's go ahead and do the unboxing real quick because I want you guys to see exactly how this came. Now, I know I've talked recently about, you know, buying as local as possible. This was something I could not find locally. I dug, I called every record store. No one had this 45 in the area, so I was forced to go on eBay. But let's take a look and see how they shipped it. So I did purchase this from a top rated seller on eBay that goes by the name of 007 Spectre. Got my trusty knife here. Let's go ahead and cut into it. They have 100% positive reviews. And so I thought, you know, let's go ahead and try it. I got this for a really solid price. I didn't even pay $25 after shipping for this 45, which I know sounds a little steep for one song, but when you're talking about vinyl, you know, it's always gotta be more expensive because it's that physical, it's that physical product. Nothing sounds like vinyl. Okay, so it looks like we've got some eBay branded paper here, wrapping everything up. Okay, a little further in. Oh, cool, okay, good. They actually put this between two pieces of cardboard. Good, that helped with the rigidity. And here we go. Here is the album. No outside stickers on the cellophane of any kind. Okay, let me go ahead and get this off. All right, let's take a look and see here. I'm just gonna pull the whole sleeve out with the record. It does not appear that there's anything else inside the, the jacket. And here is the album itself. I do like it that the newer 45s, you don't have to have the 45 adapter. And for all of you that are watching this video who don't know what that is, if you look at the thumbnail for this video, that was the image on the thumbnail. That was a 45 adapter that you used to have to put inside 45s because they had a gigantic hole in them rather than a small standard pinhole of a standard LP. Welcome, agents of Spectre. There is an Englishman who has become a potential threat. Academy Award-winning R&B pop artist, Samuel Smith. He has announced to Spectre that the writing is on the wall. We will discuss this audio propaganda on today's Bond Report. Welcome back, agents. Good to see you as always, and I'm glad you got to see me. Let's go ahead and get those headphones on. We're gonna go ahead and take a listen. We've got Sam Smith's writing on the wall. stop it right there and guys we're going to listen to the song but i just want to let you know i'm going to be stopping and talking about various different topics on the songs because i do feel like going a little bit deeper into these is just doing them justice okay so right off the rip this song sounds and feels like a bond song it really really does it's very very big production value which we all know that's bond okay let's get back in Prepared for this. I never shoot to miss, but I feel. 
like a storm is coming If I'm gonna make it through the day Then there's no more use in running This is something I gotta say singing from the perspective of Bond talking to himself almost about Madeline, telling himself that he never shoots to miss. He knows he's got these fears to face with her, you know, regardless of his past and how he feels about Vesper. He goes on to say, how do I live? How do I breathe? When you're not here, I'm suffocating. And I'm, in, I'm getting Vesper from this. You know, again, I'm going back to her. Madeline, of course, she is the romance in this, in this film. But Sam Smith has gone on record and said that this song is all about the love that he has. I feel like it's him letting go of that past so that he can move on to the future. But he's also saying that, you know, he's willing to risk it all, you know, because the writing's on the wall. Now, yes, that's a metaphor. It's almost like a double entendre, too, because in the film, you see James Bond's name on the wall of all of the fallen agents where Blofeld spray painted his name on the MI6 building wall. So there's a metaphor, there's the double entendre of, you know, writings on the wall. And that tells me that, you know, he's wanting to feel love again. He's struggling with that, you know, that he's torn with it. But it's also a premonition that things may not work out with him, and Madeline. Okay, let's move on to the next verse. <laughs> So second verse, a million shards of glass, another metaphor for how he has really kind of been broken down by, you know, not only Vesper, but also his career. But he goes on to talk about, you know, how the stars align even in the dark times, or if their hope was to shatter, he won't be afraid, which I'm going to say that's going to point to Madeline where he's not afraid to take a chance. He's coming into terms with the fact that he's, he's ready to move on. And even if it is that premonition where it may not work out in the end, He's still going to try. He's not afraid to at least try and fail. Okay, so we've heard the chorus twice now, and you're really hearing Sam Smith's signature kind of thing that he does, and that is his falsetto. And it is known in the industry how beautiful his falsetto is. He has a lot of control over it, especially at the end uh, of the chorus where he's on the high note and he comes back down from that 
Uh, the rioting's on the wall, and he's in that falsetto. I'm not even going to try that. It's going to be super embarrassing. But, you know, the writing's on the wall. As he's he's starting so high with that, and as he's coming down, he's dropping into his normal voice, and that is extremely difficult to do, if, as any professional singer will tell you. That right there, that transition he does, who that is a really, really challenging thing to pull off. And part of the research that I did when I was doing the review on this song, I started going through and watching people who covered this song. Was Sam Smith really this good? Or was it something that anybody could do? And there were several people that covered this. A few of those like singing shows where people covered this. And there's a couple of people that just, you know, they have a YouTube channel and they do cover songs. And no one held a candle to the skill that Sam Smith had on these notes. Everyone dropped octaves. They brought the whole register of the song down. If they could do the falsetto, they weren't going, their transitions were not nearly as clean. So it really is a testament to Sam Smith. And that is, I think, what makes him so unique as a male performer within his genre. All right, my favorite part is coming up musically here. Spending more than half a day writing would have proven better results. A conversation with Mr. Hinks may need to take place. Uh, yeah, so number one, um, we're not really sure where he is. He, uh, he was last seen getting off a train with a drink around his neck. Number 14, then. He shall see to it that Sam Smith feels the vengeance that is the real power behind Spectre. Oh, 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 hear me out. Or maybe, maybe, he just doesn't do any more Bond songs and we let him live. I mean, eh, eh? Do we have to kill everybody? I feel like it loses its impact when you just do it to everyone. So be it. Less is more. Number 14, you may stand down. Honestly, guys, having said that, I can truly say that this track has grown on me so much more than when it launched, you know, about seven years ago. Now, you may have noticed that the ending of the song was extended, and they did that just for time with the movie. They cut out, I think it was four bars of the song that they removed for the film. But in this version, obviously, we got to hear those extra couple bars. And I can tell you that they're not necessary. From a recording standpoint, from a musician standpoint, um, all due respect to Sam Smith and you know everyone who worked on this album, but his falsetto was already so high, he didn't leave himself any room to go bigger, especially not the way that Billie Eilish did in her song for No Time to Die with that gigantic crescendo. And if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link for that at the end of this video so you can check that out. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about. He didn't leave himself any headspace to go bigger. So by the time he got to the end where he wanted to go bigger, you could hear in that part, those, those couple bars there, and the piano helps. There's there's some extra piano that's kind of running with him 
to kind of build it up a little bit more to make it seem bigger than what it really is. But he just didn't have anywhere to go. His register was topped out. We got what we got. You know, they made the choices they made. I don't necessarily agree with them because I feel like that's where the song fell short. You never got that big crescendo moment within the track. Did lightning strike twice after Skyfall? I'm gonna have to go with no on that. I feel like it was close. I feel like there was, all of the elements were there, but for whatever reason, they, they just couldn't, they couldn't land it like they did. And again, this is all my opinion, guys. Obviously, you know, I'm a Bond fan, so I'm gonna nitpick a little bit more. The song won a Golden Globe. It won an Academy Award for best song within a film. If you haven't seen one of his live performances of this song, I highly recommend that. As a matter of fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave a link to one of his videos in my description below so that you can check one of those out because when he does this song live, he's like 98% pitch perfect, which is just unheard of today. Here's that link for Billie Eilish. Guys, thanks so much for watching. And as always, Merry Christmas 007.